sing for the risen Savior, our Emmanuel, the God who is with us, the God who saves us and redeems us, the one and only, His name is Jesus. This is our prayer for your grace and mercy to pour into this generation and to generations to come. We sing of your name.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Iko De Leon, and I'm so blessed to be here for day two of our mid-year prayer and fasting entitled Fast, Pray, and L-O-V-E. <laughs> L-O-V-E is, is our CCF core values of love God, love others, obey God's word and authorities, volunteer, and engage the family. Last night, Pastor Eric Tatanias talked about love God and love others tonight. I'm going to speak about how do we obey God's word and authorities. And our prayer focus for tonight is the church. You see, the church is not the building. We all know this. It's the people that comprises the church. And so my question to each one of us here tonight is, how can we pray for the church? You see, there is a critical need nowadays to be anchored in God's word amidst the barrage of the progressive values, specifically in the light of the post-COVID era. Nowadays, not only does everyone have an opinion on everything, but these worldly values are veering us away from our biblical values. Whatever feels good to you, do it. There are no more absolutes. There are no objective facts. There is no truth. Everything is in a state of what is the latest. And on top of that, the prevalence of fake news and the manipulative news narratives have contributed to the confusion and the clutter of our day nowadays. Laws and bills are being pushed that are directly against God's word and principles. And it has led to the obvious brothers and sisters. And that is the moral deterioration of the world today, which really makes it more important, the critical need for us to pray for our church. This is what our church and our leaders are up against. And I submit to you that the way we can fast, pray, and love our church is to pray that our congregation and our leaders will put into their heart and consistently apply in their respective lives our core values of obeying God's word and authority. And when we obey God's word, and the God-given authorities over us, speaking in the context of tonight's message, we will just focus on church authorities being placed over us. You know, when we do that, we honor God. And consequently, we won't be swept away by these progressive values in the world today. That's why it's also critical that as a church, we constantly pray for our leaders. That's why the title of this evening's devotion is this, Pray for Our leaders. In my journey as a believer, I often have heard this from our senior pastor, Pastor Peter, that healthy leaders will produce a healthy church by God's grace. So how can we honor God and our leaders? Well, there is a command in the Bible that addresses this. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7 and 8, let me read it to you. Remember, to those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. First, I submit to you, we honor God and our leaders when we remember them. Remember means to exercise memory, to recall something to mind. And I submit to you that one way to calling them to mind is to remember our leaders in prayer. Pray for our church leaders that the result of their conduct, meaning not only through their words, their teaching, or their preaching, but through the actions in their lives that they live, that they will constantly encourage us, as the Bible tells us, that we could imitate their faith. You see, when we remember them, and those who spoke the word of God to us, and consider the result of their conduct, the overflow of that means we should be encouraged to imitate their faith. So that we need to, again, pray that our leaders will consistently follow Christ so we can imitate their faith. Imitate is in the present imperative, which means keep on imitating the faith of their leaders. In short, what this is actually encouraging all, both of us, all of us, is make it a habit to imitate their faith. Folks, I know that our leaders are not perfect, and yet God calls them faithful and calls you and I to follow their example of faithfulness. I know 
that you and I agree with me that faithfulness is not a manifest by one's perfection, but by one's general direction. And that general direction, brothers and sisters, is the path towards Christ-likeness. And as you remember your leaders in prayer, and as you pray for them that the result of their conduct is a faith worthy of imitation, we can also pray in confidence. Why? Look at verse 8. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus who supernaturally empowered all those past leaders, the apostles, the heroes of our faith in the generations past, and even the current crop of leaders that are leading, serving over the church today, the same Jesus who empowered them is empowering us today and will answer the prayers that you and I will pray for when we ask Jesus to really bless our leaders so they will have the wisdom and that the result of their conduct is encouraging so that we will be able to imitate their faith. And interestingly, as we grapple with these new progressive worldly principles, the stuff I was talking about in the intro, and the teachings that are barraging the church today, similarly, the context of the book of Hebrews in chapter 13 also had to do with varied and strange teachings in verse 9. So I submit to you, to avoid being carried away by false teaching. Remember, to pray for our leaders, to pray for the result of their conduct to live godly lives and pray to imitate the faith of our godly leaders and to hold firmly to the centrality of Jesus Christ, his sacrificial death, and the promise of eternal life. You see, in a world of constant change, you can trust the unchanging Christ. And the second way to honor God and our leaders, according to scriptures, is when we obey and submit to them. Verse 17, the author of Hebrews is saying, when our leaders speak on the authority of God's word, they do have a right to expect obedience. Let me clarify that. The obedience, of course, is not to them per se, but to God. And that is a very important understanding of this verse. The idea is as the leader is following God, you and I are to submit to him or her. And as we submit to him or her, we're actually ultimately submitting to God. This concept of obedience and submission to godly leadership is so critical nowadays, given the cultural context of our times. You see, there's no more absolute truth. No one believes in that. And that each person is free to make up or interpret truth as he or she sees fit. Everyone has their own version of their truth, and they believe in their own version, which makes submission to God's word and to God the authorities such a difficult concept to grasp. Especially since a lot of them are not really aware of this biblical truth. To these people, the truth is not authoritative. What they normally say is this, huh? I am the authority over my life, and I use this truth according to what I believe in. And that's why this verse is so game-changing and so powerful. Another reason why we should obey godly leaders is because, look at the verse, they keep watch over your souls as those who are accountable to God. You see, God has constituted various, various levels of authority under his ultimate authority. The purpose for all authority is to protect and place those that are placed under that authority. That is God's design. God establishes the authority of civil governments to protect and bless law-abiding citizens. In our family, God appoints husbands to have authority under Christ in order to protect and bless their wives and their children. In our church, God has appointed elders, pastors, overseers, ministry head, deacon leaders to shepherd the flock. And on every level, those in authority are never in absolute authority. Why? Because as the Bible tells us, every leader will give an account to God. That is why we really need to pray for our leaders. You know, as a leader, 
you know, this verse is a sobering reminder that I really, really need your prayers. We all need your prayers. The stewardship of the role of a church leader is huge. Imagine, the Bible reminds us that we need to keep watch over the souls. You know, as fellow leaders, I hope that this is a constant reminder to all of us that the Bible commands the church to obey and to submit to leaders. But as leaders, we are also commanded not to lord over them, but prove to be examples for the flock. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3. And because we leaders are going to be ultimately accountable to God. What a tall order. But that is what God appoints them to do. And in the same verse, members of the congregation are reminded of their responsibility to their leaders. They are to be submissive and to let them do this with what? With joy. You know, the same word joy here in, in, in verse 17 is the same word joy in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, which means it's the fruit of the Spirit. And so the Bible is encouraging us in telling us that we need to let our leaders do this with joy, not with grief. That is to lead with joy means they cannot do this on their own strength. They can't do this naturally. So you and I would really have to pray for our leaders so that they could supernaturally lead with joy. Clearly highlighting the leader's continual dependence on the spirit and God's grace to function effectively in their roles. And folks, that is why we need to pray for our leaders. Pray that they will not lead with grief. You know what not with grief means? In context, leaders experience grief when the people that they are leading are actually being disobedient. And when you are disobedient, the Bible tells us that it's actually unprofitable for you. You know why it is unprofitable? Because because it does no good to you when we disobey godly counsel. Obedience to godly church leaders is for our benefit because disobedience to them would be unprofitable for you according to scriptures. Folks, God designed authority to protect and bless. If you disobey godly church leaders who proclaim God's word to you, you're actually disobeying God, which we all know, has serious consequences. Tonight, I've invited a brother in Christ to share his testimony on how obedience to God's word and submission to his godly authorities placed over him allowed him to persevere amidst all the challenges that's come into his life. Brothers and sisters, can we all welcome our brother, Dr. Shalito Tamban. I grew up being physically, verbally, and emotionally abused by my father, who was jobless, a drunkard, and a gambler. So to forget my problems, I focused on studying and achieving in school, which helped me get a scholarship for my pre-medical course. While I was gone to pursue my education, I learned that my mom had quit her job to take care of my siblings. They didn't have electricity, enough food to eat regularly, and they were all sick. What broke my heart even more was finding out that my dad sold our properties only to support his vices and a second family. I blamed God for everything. I was also frustrated and angry at my dad for taking away the joy, the joy and hope of the family. I wanted to quit despite graduating with distinction and gaining another scholarship for medicine. It was a reasonable idea considering my parents' separation and the status of my family. When I was about to quit due to all these disappointments, a classmate invited me to CCF. The pastor said, if he gave his only son for us, will he not give what we need to us? I pondered, here is a father who is willing to give his all through his only son. Wow, what a great love. It was then that I prayed in surrender, this time with complete faith and trust in Jesus, who is in authority over my life and who can supply everything me and my family needed. That night, I committed my life to Christ. Several years passed since my encounter with Jesus and by his grace, I continued in my profession as a doctor even working as a consultant in several hospitals and medical organizations. In spite of having numerous work commitments, I resolved to obey God's command to share the gospel and make disciples. Initially, I was hesitant because I wasn't sure if I was prepared or good enough to serve as a D-group leader. But thanks to my leader then who patiently taught me God's word and encouraged me to follow the Lord by faith, I wholeheartedly said yes to discipling. 
I have to admit that it wasn't all smooth sailing once I started discipling men on top of the demands of being a doctor. But the more I listened to my leaders and mentors and focus on how Jesus led in the Bible, the more I experienced the blessings of obeying God. At present, I have discipled and mentored over 50 men by the grace of God alone. But obeying God is not often easy and at times becomes challenging. In 2019, Pastor Ikoy asked me to serve as the coordinator of two major retreats of Big or B1 with God. That time, I was struggling and grieving due to the death of my grandfather. I was also diagnosed with multiple health conditions involving my brain, heart, bone, and digestive system. My mother and younger brother also got sick and needed urgent medical care. All the while, these were happening on top of numerous work commitments and challenges I had. These were the times that I drew strength from God's word and continued to serve my family and in church. I am reminded by what Pastor Ikoi would always say. When God calls you, He will sustain you. He, like many of our leaders in the church, showed me how to lead as I serve. He modeled to me the importance of pursuing intimacy with God no matter what was happening around me. I was constantly reminded to fix my eyes on Jesus in all seasons of life. All praises to Jesus. About 500 singles attended the Big True Life Retreat 2019, and for Big 15 Leadership Conference, about 560 leaders attended. When the pandemic came in 2020, I had to step down in the ministry. Being exposed to COVID patients, I was quarantined for seven times. After my first quarantine, I received news that my younger brother died. I got depressed and had multiple suicidal ideations. But I thank God for my leaders and disciples who continued to pray for me and even counseled me during my lowest points. I was able to gain the will to press forward despite being emotionally and medically compromised. I understood what the Bible said in the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But I do not consider my life of any account as dear to myself, so that I may finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. As I chose to obey God and listen to my leaders, I serve again as one of the retreat coordinators of Big True Life Retreat 2022, and amidst the pandemic, about 491 singles attended. All praises to Jesus. Had I not become obedient to the Lord in the guidance of my leaders and mentors, I would have become a doctor. I would have not witnessed the many lives that God saved. I would have attempted suicide for harboring so much anger all my life. And most of all, I would not have seen my mother encounter Christ herself. In God's time, my mom was eventually convinced to attend an all-women's retreat in CCF where she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. She is now part of a D group and served as an usher at CCF Calamba, Laguna. Had I not known Jesus, I would have not shown love to my dad after he asked forgiveness last 2020. We now regularly message each other as I try to point him to Jesus as well. It's not always easy to obey God, but He always provided me with guidance through His Word. As I admit, submit my life to the Lord, I am also encouraged by the lives of our leaders who serve as an example of God the living as they follow Jesus. When our leaders ask the church for prayers, it reminds me that they too need help and support. It encourages me to pray and submit to authorities who are ultimately accountable to Jesus as they serve the church. I am Celito Tamban, still a work in progress, committed to obey God and His godly leaders. To God be all the glory. Thank you, Doc Lito, for that wonderful testimony. Praise God for the encouragement that if we truly obey God's word and follow the authorities placed over us, God leads us to the right path. What is the title of tonight's message? Pray for our leaders. You see, God has designed his people, us, to submit to his word and to his appointed authorities and servant leaders. How we honor these appointed authorities in every aspect of our lives is how we ultimately honor God in our lives. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Be imitators of me, just as I also imitate Christ. Earlier in the book of Hebrews that we talked about, the author commands his readers to imitate the faith of the godly leaders. Here, the Apostle Paul reminds us that we ought to follow him, Paul, as he followed Christ because obedience to God's appointed leaders, ultimately, brothers and sisters, is to obey God himself. I'm blessed that I'm a personal recipient of your prayers and many of you have been praying not just for me but for all the leaders and it's truly unquantifiable. It's something that leaders truly treasure. It sustains us. It carries us by grace to this calling. And because I'm experiencing the blessing of prayers, I too 
am encouraged and praying consistently for my leaders. And this dynamic of the entire church praying for all the leaders, that would be such a blessing to the congregation. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that our church leaders will continue to handle and teach the word of God. Pray that the result of their consistent godly conduct will serve as an encouragement so we can Im imitate their faith. And pray this in confidence, knowing that our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday and today and forever, is the one hearing our prayers for our leaders and the one who will ultimately answer this for his honor and for his glory. Thanks, everyone. I hope you have a blessed time praying for the church tonight and for your individual concerns for our family and for our country. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Ikoy. You know, this is such a timely reminder of our need to obey and abide by God's enduring word and also to honor and submit to the leaders God has called to take care of us. You know, as we have been introduced last night to our prayer guide, let us remember these four inner movements. Pray, which stands for pause, resist and repent, ask and yield. First is we pause. And we worship. Before we do anything else, let's all take a few seconds to be still and quiet before God. Worship Him now as Chief Shepherd over all the church, the one who takes care of us and ultimately unites all of us in His grace. Let's give thanks for how God has been at work in our entire CCF movement. Let us also give thanks for our pastors, elders, and leaders for constantly guiding us in our spiritual walks. Next, we admit to God how we sometimes fall short in fully obeying Him. We come before the Lord to confess our faults, failures, and frustrations just between you and Him. Why don't you just spend this moment to come before God and just repent and confess if there is any untoward way in you. We resist our natural compulsion to take control over Christ's church, and we ask that He would grant us a humble heart and enable us to repent from any sin. After that, we will ask God to guide and empower our church, CCF, including all of the leaders and members to abide by the Lord's great commission, that we would be in harmony with one another, sharing the same vision and mission for making disciples for God's glory. You can pray for CCF as a whole. You can pray for the different satellites that you belong to. You can pray for the servant leaders in your respective satellites. And again, remember to lift up the pastors, the elders, the D-group leaders, Pastor Peter, our senior pastor, as they make decisions 
and hear from God in the direction to take this church. As we prepare to pray in the moments to follow, we make it a point to ultimately submit ourselves under the will and command of Christ as His body, His church. We ask the Lord together to move CCF in His direction and under His supervision. As Jesus says in Matthew 21 verse 13, My house shall be called a house of prayer. As we prepare to pray, let us remember these four aspects of intercession through God's Spirit. We will be showing prayer pointers on the screen with our specific focus for today so that you would be guided as you pray. Let's also join our hearts to intercede for the church.
Why don't we all join our hearts as we close in prayer? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to come before your throne of grace, that we may seek you, lift up our petitions to you, and intercede for our church, our leaders. Dear God, we pray for our church, CCF. We pray, dear God, that you would help us be faithful and intentional in fulfilling the Great Commission, that all of us would grow a burden and would be passionate about reaching the lost, reaching others for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our senior pastor, Pastor Peter, that you would give him wisdom and discernment as you have given him the privilege to steer this church in the direction that you have set. We pray for his family, his wife, Diana, his entire household. We pray, dear God, for protection. We pray, dear God, that they would all walk in holiness, that you would give them good health, Lord, and that you would help them model Christ-likeness. Father, we pray for our pastors, our elders, our ministry leaders. Lord, that you would empower all of us to serve with a heart of humility, that we would always be motivated by your love. Lord, that we would seek to honor and glorify you in every decision and in everything that we do. Lord, we also pray for our leaders. We pray for our D leaders, our D members, and all of us, dear God. I pray, Lord, more than anything, we would really grow in our relationship with you, that we would know you intimately, and that intimate relationship will overflow to everyone around us, that we would be a blessing to others. And Lord, we pray for our church. We pray, dear God, that this church would be characterized by love and unity, that our testimony as one church family would be a testament of your goodness and your faithfulness, that we will be a blessing to everyone around us, wherever there is a, a CCF church, wherever we are in, in, in the world. Lord, I pray that we would be a blessing to the communities around us, to the people around us. And Lord, most of all, that you would be honored and glorified through this church. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A few reminders, if you would like to be prayed over or have any questions or are in need of counseling, we invite you to join our online prayer centers where you can meet with a prayer facilitator who can intercede with you and for you. We have several Zoom links of various satellites, so please check on the screen for the CCF satellite nearest you and join your respective online prayer center. You can also connect with us via our online chat seen on the links on your screen. We look forward to being with you again tomorrow, 7.30 p.m. for day three of our prayer and fasting week. We will tackle our third core value and we'll be hearing a devotion from our brother, Gino Rodriguez. God be with all of us. See you.